Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, your YouTube shop teacher, and welcome back. This is part two to the video where I am making a milling attachment for the Atlas lathe. And you recall the last episode was this angle plate, and I bored that inch and a half hole, I hope accurately, so that it will fit over this, and it does, and it swings around nicely. Probably could even be a little bit tighter fit, but it's pretty good. So, the next thing I need to do is to locate and drill the holes for the uh, screws and the pins. Now, how in the heck am I going to locate them? Now, I don't expect this to be easy, and I've been thinking about this when I was in bed last night, so I'm going to give this a try and see how it works. So, keep watching. What I've done here is to take out the pins and the screws. You Atlas people know what I'm talking about here. And I put in a 3816 transfer screw. You all know what those are. Where, is, where does it say 38? Okay. And then assembling this temporarily, just like that, by gravity, I am going to try to locate the center of this, which will not be too difficult because I'm going to slide up this rather uh, nice piece of aluminum that just happens to fit by providence between the uh, saddle here. I'm kind of surprised it fits that I found a piece without cutting it. And swinging this around I have already located and using good lighting and even this I have determined that I am now on the center of those screws, that, that is the right height, and I intend to transfer these, that dimension, directly onto my workpiece, my angle plate. We'll see how that works. I applied some uh, layout die to three sides. I really don't know where I, I want to drill the holes yet, so I'm just laying out the, the height right now, and of course this could be done with the surface gauge also. You don't need a, a height gauge. I favor the height gauge, but I'm not really taking a measurement. I'm transferring, but putting this back on the plate here. See, I can slide that anywhere I want, and I don't know if I want it on all three sides, because I'm still in the thinking stage, but there we go. I believe that locates the correct height. Now over to the bench. Before I locate these holes, I believe I'm going to digress just a little bit here with one of my more minor rants, and that is that my critics, of which there is no shortage, often point out that I am banging on my surface plate. I don't directly hit it, but often I am uh, center punching, you know, something like this, and, and they object to that, but here, here's my point now. I like to work on this plate. It's a little bit too small. I consider it disposable. It is the perfect background for photography because it does not glare and yet it's not white like working on something that is too bright. So, I this is uh, 9, let's see, 9 by 12 and it's only 2 inches thick. That's what I liked about it. And I bought this at Grizzly, and it is what they call their uh, their B grade. So it's just a, a tool room grade. It's semi-accurate, but certainly more uh, accurate than even what I need. And there it is on the top mark there, uh, $32. And it was, I've had this, I got it dated over here. I've had this for about five years. I won't take the time to, to show you that date. So I paid less. Not only that, but I picked it up at uh, Grizzly in Springfield, Missouri, so I did not have to pay shipping. The shipping would be way too much. But I believe I'm going to declare this scrap here very soon and buy the larger one. I don't really want it to be thicker, but I do want a 12 by 18, so that's 50 bucks if I pick it up down there at Grizzly. So that's where I got this. Also remember that should I abuse this, and, and I don't abuse anything on, on purpose, but let's just, 
I stepped away from. Let's just say I did hammer on it. What would happen is uh, a flake would come out. And uh, we could care less about low spots or little uh, 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 cavities. It just isn't a factor. We don't want raised spots. And the, the raised high spots is what you would get if this was a steel or a cast iron plate. So uh, these are nice. And uh, so I'm just saying I really can't hurt it by what I'm doing. So th that's my reaction here. And the rant is over. Let's get on with the job here for crying out loud. I have officially decided I'm going to drill a hole here and one on each side for a total of three, possibly only use two of them as long as I got the setup for that. So I've already located the center here because I just dropped this line down. That line was already on there from the uh, original uh, layout line. So I just dropped it down with my, my little square. So that one is located. Now the other two how am I going to locate those so that they're in the center of this hole? Well, I already measured this, and that was 520 thousandths, and the radius of this hole is 750 for a total of 1.270, and I now have this set at that dimension. So, how am I going to do that? I guess like this. Bring that over like that. I'm trying to get in position for the camera here is what I'm doing. Fumbling around and I'll I'll scribe that. And the one on the other side also. You see there are people that are objecting to me uh, my even doing this on the plate and then when I go in with the uh, where's my center punch I don't believe this hurts the plate but some of the purists do so I punched all three of those and I'm now ready in a minute here to drill them I need to take the time to repeat something here on these transfer screws and this is a large enough size so you can really see what I'm talking about here. It's a hymen. They come in every size. It's one of the greatest inventions ever conceived by mankind. Tiny little punch there. We've got a little socket wrench here. So it's just perfect to transfer holes. All right. Now this little pin here, remember that those go in, they're hardened, and I think that's 45 degrees, but i got to measure that again. But using a magnet, you can see that these go all the way in. You've got to be oriented correctly, of course. These are 5 sixteenths in diameter. They're probably made from hardened uh, dowel pins, I would think, but they are 5 sixteenths. Get yourself one of these if you don't have it. I like the black cheap ones better than the steric because they're, they're really easy on the eyes and they don't rust. I've had this for years. That's 5 16 Now, these square-headed uh, screws are 3 8 That's 3 8 16 Well, what's the tap drill size for this? It happens to be 5 16 So I will drill these holes all the way through. Well, that's... Let's see, that's 3 eighths. Where's my 5 sixteenths? Okay, there's the 5 sixteenths. So I will drill that all the way through this piece in three spots. I'll work up to it, and I'm not going to show that because that's just too simple. And then I will proceed after the, the holes in there to uh, tap just a portion of it. I got that's to be determined for this screw, 3 8 16. So drill 5 16, tap a portion of it. These may be too long. I may have to make newer ones. New ones, not newer. Uh, there isn't a whole lot. Either that or I can use shorter screws here. So there isn't as much room here, I'm, is what I'm saying, as there is here. We got a full, oh, what is it? Inch and uh, 5 8 where here it's, it's much much less and very little right here. I may not even use this one. I had just a little change in plans here. I, I determined that we just don't have enough meat right here. 
so I'm moving it to the back side where there's plenty so that's the hole I'm working on these will be about the same they've only been drilled a quarter inch a pilot drill so this is a tapered 3 8 tap and I'm only going to go in about where you see that mark there then I'll back it out and run a bottoming tap in to that depth This is the nicest gray iron in the way it machines, drills, and taps. It's about an hour later and I have all three holes drilled and tapped. Remember, I abandoned this one. I can always go back to that if I need to, but I decided not to drill it. Instead, I'm using this one. And after I drilled them, let's review, I, I drilled 5 16 all the way through and then tapped it halfway. I found it necessary to run a 5 16 reamer through just to clean it up a little bit. And then uh, looking at the one back here, I'm going to insert a pin in there like that. I'll orient it later on. This is a screw that I got, I had in stock. I got several different lengths. This is the original one, so, so this being shorter. Now once I install this on the lathe, it might be that this one will be in the way, some kind of interference. If it is, then I'll use a socket head set screw. But for now, I'm going to go over to the lathe and put this on. Not all three of these, because eh, three is probably unnecessary, but I did like the angle, see, on the original, you had, uh, I think they go in at 90 degrees to one another, like that, and which is better, I suppose, than this. This is the correct orientation of the pins, so I'll push them back. and put a couple screws in there I'm just going to do the two for now and I think these screws are going to be too long let's see, yeah see how much sticks out there it's just more more than what I want but I don't think I have any shorter ones they could be cut off but they are hardened of course but tightening the two down has made it real stiff. That slop is in the cross slide there. So whether or not that's uh, firm enough, rigid enough for the operation, I don't know. But at least I have that part done. This part is essentially done now. It'll set like that. Later on I will have an index mark on there lining it up with this protractor, but I'll indicate it in, and that'll be toward the end. These corners here could be rounded off. Probably won't do that either, but it might look better. And you can see that I still have the majority left here of this webbing. I, some got milled out, but not a whole lot. And I decided a long time ago I didn't intend to make this inch and a half hole, hole a blind hole because I knew there wouldn't be much left here. And I, that doesn't hurt a thing that, that uh, this part of the lathe is exposed. At this point in time, the next step I think is, I'll just snug that up, to locate the compound and exactly where does it belong on this thing. Well, it can only go so far here because of the web. In other words, where do I drill the two holes to hold this T-slot piece, which will go in here like this? I've been thinking here for a few moments, and I've extended the travel here as far as it'll go. In other words, till it's touching here. And if that is the case, putting this back in place, that pretty much puts the location of this in line with these two screws. 
So I'm going to drill uh, two holes in this, uh, lay a line across there. Those are all, uh, will be 3 8 holes, and this will be drilled and tapped. I've decided that this T-bolt, this T-nut, will be on the center line of these two holes. I wish this was a little longer, but I made it out of a piece of scrap that was two and three quarters or whatever it is. These two holes just so happen to be two inches on center. So, having found the center of this piece and swung a one inch arc on either side, that's where I'm going to drill and then tap them three eighths, 24, fine, for these hardened, uh, I think that's grade five, screws. All right. And I'm not going to show that because it's too routine. Alrighty, I tapped these two holes 3 8 fine. That's 3 8 24. Those are a little bit shorter screws than what I intend to use later on, but they're fine for fitting it up. And this is the whole idea now that I can fasten the compound onto the angle plate. Let's tighten those down a little bit and take it over to the machine and see what it looks like. Now mounted on the Craftsman lathe, you can see what we've got so far. And I have a feeling that this is up too high. And I really won't know until I'm done. But no harm has been done here because I did not drill these two holes. Remember, they were already in there. So if I have to lower it a little bit, there'll be a couple more holes here below where you see the hex heads there. That's just the way it's going to be because I, I'm still, by uh, guessing bagosh here, thinking that's a little bit too high, but it, but it may not be. So the next step is the hard part. Everything else has been easy, I guess. And that is to make the vise. And this is the vise. I wish it was a little bigger, but it's rough sawn on three sides, so it's got to be milled, and that'll reduce the size just a little bit. But nevertheless, uh, I also have to make uh, the male plug in here, the male dovetail. That's going to be kind of tricky, but you get the idea. That's going to be on there, and so, and I do think it's up too high because right now I'm at the very lowest uh, point that I can go. So, And so be it if I have to drill two more holes later on. That, that doesn't really bother me. Okay, now I'm ready to start this, but I tell you what, it's been a long day. That's quite enough fun for today. Is everybody happy? I think I'll call it quits and go up and watch the Rifleman, and I will uh, see you tomorrow. So long for now, this is Tubal Kane.